yesterday in my life because my son toppled it yeah <laughs> oh my gosh we are live uh, and we just going to awesome. the facebook load rosa okay and i'm getting better at tech stuff and still is going to yes my god awesome. and here, here we go we've done it very quickly i figured out awesome now not to echo when facebook loads up la lucy is waiting already i'm getting her messages up so you're here um <laughs> uh, everybody yes i think all your moms must be wondering she has a workshop at 6 and we have an interview going on what's happening but that workshop yes. has to happen this will also happen we have 25 more moms in the next i think 18 days to finish so nothing should stop everything will go on we have a beautiful mom who's also expecting uh she already has two boys and now she is uh, expecting her third one in december so of course yes. we will have one pregnant mom in the book as well so i'm glad we caught one of not after she had her child after yeah <laughs> get some pictures of pregnant moms as well in her story um rosa uh, welcome this is beautiful and thanks lucy for introducing rosa i think i've laughed the maximum with rosa i don't know why i like cracking jokes with her already i don't know i don't know her enough but i think your laughter is very uh, infectious rosa so i love laughing with you uh, yes for making me laugh or laughing at my silly jokes i am really not i don't have a good sense of humor but if you can laugh at it yeah i i guess we have the sim- a similar sense of humor <laughs> that's why we understand each other probably um, yes Uh, go ahead, Rosa. Introduce yourself because the mother who lives her story tells her story the best. Let's hear Rosa's story till here, and introduce you to the world. And welcome to the book. Thank you, Sheik. I, I really appreciate you having me. I appreciate Lucy for you know giving me introducing me to you and you for giving me the opportunity you know to to <laughs> share my story with you. And you are such a great leader, so you deserve to be here. Absolutely. Yes and uh, you know I think we, I think the reason why we connect so well is because we we both have something in common we have the two boys yes. you know and 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 obviously motherhood just connects us all <laughs> with all of the with all of the things all of the good and and, and the, the struggles and everything that we go through yeah, as moms um but you know my my story kind uh started back in 2014 when um my dad actually passed away and that was one of the things um he had cancer that was one of the things that actually shook me a lot of times you hear the people's stories and it's like when the story kind of like takes a twist is when right. something happens that shakes right. them right, right. so <laughs> and, and and that happens a lot so that was the time that i was just like you know kind of questioning like what's my purpose what am i going to do with my life you know i had been in corporate america um i became an accountant uh you know at, at back in 2007 and i had been working in like corporate the uh, corporate america corporate jobs and i was just going with the flow like on automatic not understanding really what my purpose was of what my power was and then at that time i really started to question myself and question like what is like what what is this whole thing about like what am i going to do i have i i i started to like tap into you know myself and just start you know like questioning and being and and being in silence and kind of like at, trying to answer those questions. Mm-hmm. So it took me a little while and and I think through those uh, you know a couple of years it was just like me um feeling all of the things but at the same time it was really painful um and I tr- I had tried to like um kind of uh you know I I never really wanted to process the feelings so I held on and I was uh I was just like the type of person that it was just like I'm strong you know like I can do this I you know I don't need anybody to help me I can get through this but I was going really I was really in a dark place and I was just like trying to find the answers but didn't but but didn't want to process the feelings at the same time so i was like i became really depressed it was just like something i i, I was drinking alcohol drinking wine whenever i felt sad and avoiding like all of the feelings so i would come home from work and i would be like 
oh, I feel really sad. And then I'll just grab a glass of wine. I feel better now, you know? Right. So then, <laughs> so then I, um, so then in 2016, I felt like I was at my lowest and I uh, created, I, I started going online and I found, I created uh, my company called She Who Rises. Well, it was, it was, yeah. So I was uh, like, I was, I had fallen. So I wanted to get back up. And that was the message behind that. Right. Um, so I, I started just sharing things on Instagram, just like finding things that would inspire me right. and then sharing them with others. And, you know, and then I just started attracting people like a lot of moms, a lot of women who had been through like struggles that I had been through and just telling my story. Right. And from that, um, you know, like I started growing and I was like, oh, maybe this can turn into something, something else. Um, and over, you know, over the next few years, I started finding mentors and people that would, that were guiding me. I didn't really know. I had no idea what to make it into. Um, and uh, then I found like the KBB group, uh, you know, Tony and Dean. I, <laughs> I immediately, when I saw that, I was just like, oh, that's, that's my thing. That's what I have to do. <laughs> I can put all of this that I've been thinking about into something. Yes. So then, you know, like I, I joined that. Um, found like a really great community there and it, it was just like one thing led to another to another to another person um, I found my coach in there you know it was just like uh, now now I'm like clear on what I have to do and what I want to do and I and and because I have like clarity and vision I'm just like okay I know what I have to do and even if um, you know, like sometimes in the beginning, you feel like things are quiet, like you're the only one showing up, you're, you're, you're in this space and, and you show up live or, or, or you, you do an interview or things like that. And you're just like, how, you know, like people, how, how many people have watched this or, you know, like how, who is, who is liking my post, who is commenting. Um, and I feel like that the you know like getting past that and knowing that you're showing up first for yourself absolutely and and then you know and then for everyone else that comes and happens to see what you're sharing right so that was <laughs> so so all of that and um and and with my boy my boys I had a nine-year-old I have a nine-year-old and and then I have a two-year-old, so. Our like boys are almost the same age. I have an eight-year-old and a two-year-old. So our boys yeah. are almost the same age. Yes. So the first one, thankfully, is able to take care of himself and help out. Yeah. Thank God. Yes. <laughs> and now, but now I have the little one coming and, you know, then I have the two-year-old. So I'm like, okay, how is that going to happen? You know, <laughs> that how how is he gonna feel and all of those things that you have to figure out but you just yeah you figure it, out. mothers no matter how many children have they they have they figure it out they all figure it out yes but to go back you know uh while you were talking about the fact that you know we uh i was not processing my feelings etc etc you know we all feel yeah that. but a lot of yeah. times even if i feel that we feel them but we it's yeah difficult to ask for help that's the problem uh, also. A lot of times we know that we are going through yes. so much problem and just to ask for help to say, yeah. uh, well, you know, a uh, very long time back, Rosa, I also, uh, I also uh, understood that, uh, you know, like for me, giving is a very easy thing. Like people can mm -hmm. do anything that I don't know oh. why you give. Why do you just like... I don't know. It's the most easiest thing for me. Not that I'm some great person. It's a very easy thing for me. Receiving was a very difficult thing. Receiving yes. is a problem. And you know, and that, the help is also receiving. Gifts also are receiving. And you some, sometimes felt that, uh, you know, like, of course, I've done a lot of self-work and I, uh, you know, how the Buddhist monks, you know, when they, they, they receive, they receive with, a, they bend down and then they receive with as much humility as possible, as much as they yeah. can, you know. 
um, yes. of course they give a lot of spirituality to the world but when they move out um, they also receive um, yes some practices also going and asking for food because it's about receiving and of course on my way in this journey i understood that receiving is also equally important and uh, you know a lot of times we don't ask for help because we feel that we can figure it out and as you mentioned and we feel we can manage it but that itself comes out of ego you know it comes out of a lot of ego because we think we are very great and you know others need us but we don't need anyone and you know yeah. resolve that and there are times uh, you know when you need um you have to open your arms like this and say yes and that's yes that's even more difficult than giving that's even more difficult than and you know people can think it's easy but to just open your arm and say rosa i need help you know just like this, yes like the buddhists uh, do i need food uh this opening up of the arm is a problem and i want to put this message out that because i did this journey of resolving it um that when you receive it you you should like you should receive it without any ego you don't yeah. become a smaller person and that could be help in terms of emotional health that could be help in terms of whatever and this this whole uh, uh project i am receiving a lot you know uh um, yeah. whenever like there are pillars here there's lucy here there are my editing team here when they give i just open my arm and say yes i need help yeah i can't yes and that's why this project is also multiplying because there is no ego you know when i receive it i'm like yes i don't know how to do good spelling so i'll take it I'm right <laughs> i'm going to be a foolish person saying no it's all my project and i don't need editors to do anything and i can do everything yeah, right by myself <laughs> because there are 100 moms of course i need help to do it of course i'm i'm having sleepless nights with my child and of course i need some smiles and some pat in the back even if it's virtual saying that chika it's okay when if you're coughing you know this cold coming we can see you yes. so that's what i realized and i it just came to my mind because i resolved it as well i had a problem in receiving one point in time so yes uh, going back to she who rises did you think you you were rising after you started receiving or um it's still a problem I'm just yeah you know what uh in terms of receiving i think that that is has always been something that uh the, the same for you know same like you just said is is uncomfortable so there are some things that i think we i'll be working on for for a while because i'm i'm working on um you know being able to accept the help being able to ask for help i'm working on you know on that but these are things that that i've been like like i've been used to doing that i've been used to giving for so long i've been it's like a natural thing right like um exactly so it feels uncomfortable to do the receiving it feels uncomfortable but it has to be a balance so one of the things that i think is also related to that is having boundaries so knowing that you know like having boundaries with yourself even with your children <laughs> something that is just like you know very important that you i've never had clear boundaries with my family right and now in during this time i'm learning how to put boundaries and and be clear on my boundaries and express them and be okay with that um and and also you know like learn that i that when i need the help that i can ask for it right. and that it's okay. okay and like and that like you said it takes like hum- humility okay. from yourself because you have to like make yourself uncomfortable and say Yes, it's it's true. I do need the help. I'm you know, I I am human. I am a mom and I'm still great. And and being able to like con- congratulate myself or make myself feel good when I do these things, when I when I put a boundary there, even the smallest boundary that that I, you know, that I make clear with my mom or with my partner, I I I immediately after if if I'm aware, if I'm awake, right? <laughs> I can say you know you know what that is 
what keeps me going, what keeps me building and learning more how to build my boundaries is being able to recognize that I did that. And then I go back and say, you know what? I did that. That uh, let me pat myself in the back. Like I said, allow other people to pat my pat my back, but yeah. also me recognizing, oh, that was good. I did that. So that, you know, like that positive reinforcement yeah. is one of the things that that like keeps me like moving and growing. Right. Because if I don't recognize the things that I'm actually doing right you know, then <laughs> I'm not going to be able to grow. So yes, yeah. at that point was like really uh, in, you know, and, and we're all like a work in progress, obviously, <laughs> but, but, but uh, looking back and I'm just like, wow, the things that I, I did, I wasn't even scratching the surface at the time, uh, but I had the right idea. Like I was, I found, um, you know, like a gratitude and that gratitude was just like, like something that, you know, people always talk about gratitude and I would be like, okay, uh, gratitude, you know, I'm thankful. I'm thankful, but it wasn't that it was, just, it wasn't just saying thank you. And I, and I found that deep connection with gratitude that gave me so much power and kind of like woke me up to this new world of like, wow, it, it's energy really. And wow. it, it, it felt super powerful to feel and, and the, to feel the gratitude in like in deep inside of my core and be able to let it drive me on a day to day. And that like took me out, literally pulled me out of like the dark hole that I was. That's, I think, the, the, the real reason why she like I was able to rise because of that so <laughs> no it takes courage it definitely takes a lot of courage to be vulnerable it takes courage to ask for help it takes courage to receive because when we are growing up actually we grow up with the opposite notion if you're a giver yeah. you're a better person if you're stronger you're a better person <laughs> if you yes be you're a better person no matter what yes. you happen, be strong you should be grateful like again even the grateful is used in your opposite way when we're growing up by our parents saying oh if you should be grateful because see what's happening to the world if you're eating one yeah meal, you know one right. kind of uh, in our case uh, you know chapati which is a bread uh, they will say, okay, don't even leave one bite. You should be grateful because there are people yeah. who are hungry. I think this goes across the world and this is mm -hmm. generations people have been saying this. So when we grow up, um, yeah. we feel guilty if we think about self, like any kind of self-love. Uh, we yeah. feel guilty if we need something. We feel guilty if we ask for help. Uh, but yeah. everything else is okay. Like everything else, uh, you're absolutely fine. Or or we judge people for taking care of themselves. We judge people who say we need help. We judge people who say we have boundaries, do not step it. You know, I'm yep. not coming, I'm not doing because then we yep. judge them and we say, and the mothers go through that. You know, mothers go through that yes. and pass it like a gift to the next generation. So it's very interesting because the way you laugh, Rosa, you sh you, you, your laughter is very, very real. You know, you laugh full heartedly. And that's, you know, that's um it's not a rarity but a lot of us have forgotten how to laugh like that honestly i'm definitely yeah i def like i laugh i try to like be light at it but just wholeheartedly ha 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 is like i don't know when i did that <laughs> because i'm like i look at a movie and i'm like yeah it's funny and i'm just like what's wrong with me you know where is it not lost and then yeah I'm looking at people around me laughing and I'm like, I can't even laugh like them, you know, and my yeah. son has got it from me. Um, he tries to, he tries to laugh, but I always tell him, I said, where is that? Like, where is that laughter? Because probably he's copying me or he's learning from me or whatever. Um, yeah. And it makes, me, it makes me feel that you can laugh wholeheartedly like my father does. Like you can laugh so loudly that you literally embarrass because I tell him that you laugh really loudly and the whole world is watching you right now. And yeah. that happens when the core is absolutely sorted and you can feel it. And when you cry, my dad can cry on emotional movies like that, you know. So when you can cry and when you can laugh is when you've actually risen. And then like uh, she who rises, I feel the one who would have reached on the top would laugh, would cry, would feel every emotion to its fullest. Yes. Without yeah. anything. And that's the beautiful part about you, Rosa. Like, I see that and I feel that since I've spoken to you. I feel, um, you know, this is amazing. I could, like, 
whatever I was telling you, and I was laughing, and you were laughing, and I'm like, okay, this is only yeah. one who's laughing at what I'm saying right now. Like <laughs> finding my situation funny about my children, about yes, uh, <laughs> about the craziness. And, yes, and, and, and when we can laugh, we've sorted a lot. And even gratitude that you were talking about, reaching that yeah. gratitude without feeling that we must be grateful, that must be should be removed, right? It should not. Right. Be, we should be grateful. We have to be grateful. Look at, and then in comparison, being grateful. They don't have. Yeah. You have so be grateful. Rather than just yes. be grateful and to find that gratitude is also difficult. And you found it. And when you said to find it in the core and feel it is, I, I mean, my life has changed. And I think that's what the world is talking about when they say about gratitude and not say in yeah. comparison to this, feel grateful right yes so that's beautiful. yeah that's yeah the great the, the the I think that you know when people hear it it's not as clear you know like you feel like you said that you have to be thankful for you have to be think like you have to say thank you yes. but it's not really just the the word it's like a, it's a feeling you know it's it's a, it's really powerful it's really powerful this is, tough. this is tough I need this like this is tough and um, and it comes from uh, okay. There's a poem and all this stuff. Before that, I want to just like say hello to my mom who's here. Who are here, Cynthia? Is saying good morning. Hi, I'm mom. My dear friend Cynthia, I really love you. I know you had a little hard time, but we are with you. And I'm just a call away. Lucy is here. Of course, she was very excited. And Francis is here. So Lucy is saying when Rosa's expecting a beautiful child, I believe she's due soon. I'm just wondering what that must feel like as I never had any children. Oh, Lucy, can I just like answer that question to Lucy right now? Lucy, the way, like, I don't know how many people you have supported the way you support me. You don't have to have children. My God, Lucy, I'd rather have you as my mom. I would love you to be my bonus mom, <laughs> right? I would love yes. you. And I told this to uh, Jay, who's a weight weightlifting mom, because she was so like, solid uh and lucy i oh absolutely i feel such a motherly instinct in you um but you know the good part about lucy pointing that you are due anytime uh rosa is that yes probably out of the hundred moms that baby would be welcome when the book is coming into this world so the book yes that's right come together <laughs> or they would be one month apart uh but we will be <laughs> celebrating the hundred mums and that baby, and you'll be the only mom. And the mom. baby, yes. Mums come, who so it's going to be literally the baby of this movement, you know, for us to celebrate. Yes, and, yes, know, that's right. With you. Um, <laughs> and um, and Lucy saying beautiful explanation, Rosa, of how she who rises and why your company has that name. Thanks for sharing that. Francis saying especially with women, we are expected to be the giver, and if you don't, you are being selfish um yeah uh and self-care and self-love yes and yes this, i'm not sweet i genuinely mean it i keep these interviews very raw because i also want to express without any any uh apprehensions any ego or any kind of yeah. trying to say something to but i do feel that debbie and lucy have been just just awesome like everybody else but they've been specially so i told yes them. Um, yeah. <laughs> so she who rises, uh, she who rises. What's the most beautiful experience that you've had? Something that keeps you going with she who rises, uh, Rosa. What makes you feel uh, she who rises? You know, funny that you say that because last year, um, this in 2020, like at, we, you know, after the pandemic started and everything, at at the end of the year, like in the fall, the we probably September of last year, I started reaching out to some of the women that I knew around me, you know, family members and people that I knew had uh, also were online um, and had their own accounts and, and maybe starting their businesses. So I, I just said, hey, you know, I, my account has grown this much. I, I, I would love to have you and interview you. So I was doing also interviews with women, with moms and, and, wow. and, and women that were closer to me, that were close to me. So if you go, um, if you go there at, to, to the account to She Who Rises and you go back a little bit, you'll see that I did like 
over almost like 30 something interviews, live interviews, similar to, you know, similar to this. And it was just me kind of like this, like asking them about their story. Right. Um, so, you know, like, I love, I love what you're doing and doing that just like, you know, it gave me, it gave me, it helped me like hearing their stories yeah. helped me, helped me heal, helped my, helped my confidence, you know, and, and, and like all of the things and learning how to do things. Right. Um, and not being afraid to, to speak and not be afraid to like tell your story. And I would always like call them and say, Hey, you know, um, because on Instagram, you go on your phone, right? So it's like, just, I would say, hey, just make believe that uh, you are FaceTiming your friend and then we'll go live and there's other people that are watching, but we're just having a conversation. And then I, um, you know, a lot of them talked about how, you know, they were um, some, a, a, bear, a big group of them were like moms that had lost babies or that had had mis miscarriages and 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 yeah and though and those stories can you know like I I went through something like that so I I was like connected to that to their stories and connected to their pain and I was able to kind of like heal through through them telling me the things that they went through and the, the way that they have healed so you know it was it, that was a great you know I was doing it like every week sometimes twice a week right. and that was a really great experience and every person that I interviewed is now still like really close you know like we're, we're still like close and we talk and we still interact so I think that was one of the best moments that I've had um with with yeah, with you feel, uh, you feel, supportive. You feel, you feel uh, like for me um I um I'm almost at a verge of a like the spiritual breakthroughs that are happening and I am avoiding it absolutely don't want it because it's like coming like a wave I don't know I, if you see me from the first day of the interview and if you see my face right now you will see something is going on and I'm just like I don't want to see it I don't want to look at it but I have to because it's taking me deeper and it's taking me further it's taking me ahead and you know yes day, uh, I went to my husband I was like okay 73 are done two more 75 <laughs> I'm going back I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to. He's like, I'm not letting you do that. You've come very far. I was like, I'm yeah. not going to do it, you know. You are not going to stop. <laughs> it's, it's scaring me. It's, of course, it's scaring me as well because uh, I'm just like, yes, I'm marching ahead with this confidence and mother pulse and this and that. And yes. going ahead and saying, oh, you know, I'm resolving this. I'm finding this. I'm loving you. I'm doing this. And then I sit with myself sometimes and I'm like, oh, gosh where have I put myself right there? This is so gorgeous that I can't take it. The light is so bright that like, I'm literally like being pulled in it, but I want to go back. And I was telling my husband, yes. now, this time I'm not, and I've done this many times, Rosa, and I'm confessing it. Um, <laughs> many, many times I was led to a place where I was meant to be, to open up, to do things, to... Uh, since I'm a kid and I always never believed in it this is the first time I'm like I, of course I've had my achievements I've headed a poetry movement I've uh, had breakthroughs with health movement I've headed a printing yeah. unit 20 years of photography um, like I've done many many things in life but just before I knew now I can't take it anymore because there's going to be big bright light coming and focusing right on me I turned back I'm like I can't take it I, <laughs> yeah first time I'm saying okay, this time I'm going to the end because this is something yes. else and it's taking courage. It's taking, um, and I, I'm really not saying that I'm uh, like, I'm not implying I'm tired, but I'm very, very scared of the light. And on the hundredth, yeah. I keep saying yeah. this. Uh, I don't know whether it happens on the hundredth interview or it happens after hundredth interview, but something is waiting to happen. So I have yes. to go to hundred and touch that thing and say, Okay. Yeah, <laughs> do it. Cough, cold, fever, breastfeeding, whatever it takes, we'll be there. Yeah, be there. Uh, and that's how I feel very supportive. So I understand what you're saying. I understand yeah. how much it heals you, envelops you, gives you that light, and you know it. It brings the belief back, which very casually all of us say today's world nobody cares. This online world yeah. is all fake. 
the social media nothing is real this is all done for money and let me tell you this today that the support i have i have not like neither anybody has asked me and neither have i offered anybody to say may i pay you something i have my five people yeah. who love me and love this movement and the mothers and giving their extra time to support them across different time zones i have my editors who are like they just call me they like you'll be fine it's okay you go off to sleep and um they yeah. charge and i don't even have to look at them and say what are you doing do i need to interfere i have my cheerleaders who are cheering me yes. i have mothers so you know that's what you are talking about the envelope that happens and the belief that yes. exists and things will fall for you is what you have tried to say through she who rises and this yes and that's where probably we can laugh together because yes <laughs> no i i absolutely i believe that and you know i think that we by being our, like by by being ourselves and by being our most authentic selves is how we attract our people right and i've i've learned that along the way and you know i'm able to speak to you the way that i'm speaking to you now because i did those interviews like i i've gotten to this place where i can sit down with someone and i i was very very shy before you know before i started uh she who rises i was like for camera camera wise i would you know like sit down and you know stumble with my words and just like feel super super awkward with like showing up that it was just like so uncomfortable like nails on a chalkboard oh, yeah. type of thing <laughs> so i see your tiktoks i don't know what all you are doing you're sneezing you're acting you're doing all sorts of great stuff uh, there was one tiktok <laughs> i found it so funny because um, i think i like lucy just told me about you and i like went on to your facebook and then i saw this yes. crying i'm like what she doing why is she crying oh people? yeah <laughs> on the face and then that tiktok was about was it tiktok or real i don't know but it was about real yeah yeah and just before going live even if you're feeling horrible oh right before the reel you have to like you you like you cry and then suddenly you start laughing and smiling and yes that's the reality that's the reality because for yeah. showing up like on, on on a humorous way that's the reality because uh many of us can't stop ourselves from uh still like you know debbie had mentioned in one of the interviews that i have found like couples fighting because it was all about self portrait and selfies right so yeah. she these couples fighting and after 2 seconds just taking a picture and then going back to fight <laughs> so like, even that happened you know and i think it was real because in that selfie mode you they know that they need to go live or they're together in a interview together so they'll just go live they'll smile and then they start again, again making faces yes and yeah or a serious note you still need to show up in life no matter what's happening so you need to still yeah. show up you know so yes you're no. <laughs> very yeah. high spirited uh, person i can feel that for sure so yeah so self portrait now uh, that we are coming in the book to declare your story rosa and i would yeah. love your story to be when you're pregnant you know so you will have yes with, with your two boys because we want one pregnant mom in the book for right sure. um, yes that's right and, and my belly is very very big you can see it yes. let's see um if i can your show my belly coming, your baby is fully ready so, to come see. Yeah. Yeah. oh i have to um, i mean it's so beautiful that in this book we also deliver a baby when this book process is happening and we all yes. are celebrated with you almost 100 moms will celebrate that with you when the baby comes this time so yes and you, those, that's the best part that we you know like that, that we can connect from all over the world and all different types of uh, time zones yes <laughs> are you uh, are you worried now what rosa's story is going to be still after doing so much work of she who rises i want to know that because you will have to come up with your story very soon in the book and i'm going to have a whole yes. just after this about that because uh many mothers thought it was just an interview it was smiling laughing together and then like oops shikha actually wants us to do a, a picture of us uh, which yes you know it but it hit them when they actually had to do it with the camera that uh, yeah this self yeah. self work needed there yeah it, <laughs> and you know um i think i i'm got i've gotten comfortable with that in 
um, I think that the reason why I've gotten comfortable with uh, seeing my like seeing myself in camera and like speaking to other people in camera is because I have allowed like I have a I I had oh I have a power right I have a light I have um, a gift. I have all these things and I never really wanted to show them or wanted to realize that I have them for some reason, right? So it was just like, um, I always thought that I had to um, minimize myself in order to fit in and in order to not disturb or disrupt anybody else. So, so I... <laughs> I still what you're saying. So I always would be self-spoken. I would keep my voice down. I would do show up to places and not speak up because I thought I was doing everybody else a favor, you know, <laughs> by not by not speaking up. Okay. And I get goosebumps because I feel like. I held on to that for so long, that belief. And that was, and that was a lie, you know, like in order for me to do other people a favor, in order for me to help others, I have to let all of that out. I have to let my, you know, like allow my power, my, you know, my voice to project my voice, to, to, to show my real self and show my powerful self. Right. No matter who is around, and right. maybe it's the the reason why I'm speaking up is because the, that person needed to hear this. So I I kind of like broke through. <laughs> I came out of my shell and became comfortable with that because I realized that there's people that need what I have and what I have to offer and need to hear my words. I need to feel my power. I need to see my light shine so that they can also do the same thing. Like let their light shine, allow themselves to break through, break out of that shell and then also, and then pass that on just like you're doing. So I, I feel like that's really important. Feeling comfortable with seeing your power and feeling comfortable with allowing it to come out and to shine through no matter how it comes out. <laughs> But uh, I also feel, uh, uh, Rosa, that um, I know that I can speak. I have an interview to start, a uh, workshop to start. But what I also feel is that, again, you know, when we say that you're allowed to speak up and you're allowed to, you know, say whatever you feel like, yeah. two, three things come to my mind with that is that sometimes we feel, when we are we're very angry uh, and we can't speak, we feel we give this a very convenient thing and say, we should speak up. Why should I keep quiet about it? And we go, blah, blah, yeah. blah, and go on. But when yeah. we need to speak up to help somebody, we need to speak up to go and say, hey, you're going in the wrong direction and other things. Then we stop ourselves. Yes. And say, um, you know, maybe we're interfering too much in their life. Right. You know, maybe yeah. they're not good. And actually it should be the opposite just to create a little calmer assignment. Maybe because anger is something I think one should not speak in anger because that's the time we need to collect ourselves back and say, we just, angry. Yes. that's why we're speaking what we're speaking. And yes. vice versa, when we need to speak up and somebody jumping off the well and say, listen, you're jumping off the well. Yes. And not say that, you know, and you know, I have a, sometimes something happened and somebody said, um, you know, when, like, I don't know, it went, like, it was it in this or was it in my previous thing? I was talking somewhere and say, well, if somebody comes in this group and asks for help, I'm available when you write that sentence. So I was just like, yeah. nobody's coming to ask for help. When you <laughs> see somebody needs help. And you offer, reach out. Offer help. Yes. They will reject it, you know, because they will re they might reject it with whatever state they are in. We feel we shouldn't offer, you know, and a lot yes. of times, you know, I, I'm very famous for it. I must say this. Now, and uh, like... They have been very funny. Let's work. Okay, I must tell you <laughs> because I can't stop. Even if we have seven minutes before the workshop, it's a very funny incident. I feel for children, you know. I feel like if somebody is getting bullied, I have to speak up. I just can't keep myself. So I was in a park. 
Yes. Um, and uh, <laughs> like, of course, my friends, uh, they know that Shikha is not going to keep quiet. She is going to stand up and go and speak. And then yes. there was this man who was like, talking to this child very rudely. And they've just come out of COVID, you know, and I was feeling that they have open park, they all enjoy. And this boy was taking this, must be an eight, 10 year old boy. And this boy, man was not speaking to him nicely. And he said, go away from here and I'm warning you and this and that and step back. And that boy, boy was like tongue lashing back at him, but he was feeling his power. And I could see this boy is trying to stand up for himself and say that, listen, I'm not listening to you. And then this man yes. going and talking to other kids nicely and turning around and showing him eyes, a step back, go back, whatever. Of course, mm-hmm. I have, like I watched with my little baby who was like in eight months, nine months, and I'm like, I like he was right next to me while talking. He was doing something, and I just like started saying that stop it! Like you're just ruining the whole park the environment by bullying this boy. It's not done, and I'm standing with this boy, and I just like went on. Yeah, and, you be, you're the yeah, your I mother said, instinct. It. Yeah, I said just stop it. Whatever you are doing, stop it. <laughs> Yeah. Then, uh, my husband like you know he was pr- pretty far and he saw okay my, my wife is in the charge mode right now and she <laughs> goes and walks up and I go back with my friends and all my friends were teasing me we knew it Shikha will be like the one who will step up and, and say something and they're like yes. of course they make fun of me for all this the angry Shikha is out and all that so I'm like I couldn't take it I said I couldn't take it then my husband is like yeah. talking you know, politely to this guy turns out to be he's my husband's colleague in office and uh, <laughs> Uh, um, okay. He was about to be called for dinner, so <laughs> I was like, "Oh God!" Like you know, here I am, like, and yeah. turned out to be mm-hmm. he was talking to his son who was creating a lot of ruckus. So he was telling his son to go back. So that was his son, and yeah. a teacher or a teacher of some sports. And I tell yeah. them that everything is okay. Like even if so, what if I scolded <laughs> a a father trying to bully his own child? To... It's still not done. So I, I was just standing yeah. up for myself, saying, "It's still not done, right? It's still not done." Yeah. So he stopped myself yeah. from saying it and I came back and though it's like, uh, sorry, I was just trying to apologize, Shikha, saying that, uh, you know, he's my colleague and I go to office with him. <laughs> and I had not met him, you know, because oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? And, so he uh, felt bad so afterwards. <laughs> I said, did you tell him that, did you tell him I'm your wife? I hope you didn't say that. So he's like, uh, uh, no, I told him that she's like this only little crackpot, so it's okay. Of course, he didn't, but he's like, she's a little crackpot, please forgive it. And, uh, so that it turned out to be that the boy was really creating a lot of problems for other children, and he was trying to yeah. do the opposite. So, yeah. this, this is like funny so, things, and many such things have happened like that. With me. Yeah. Um, but yeah. it doesn't stop me from still saying, you know, people say, last time you remember you did this, and I'm like, I don't care. If I think somebody needs help, whether it's an animal or a child, I'm gonna go with it. Yeah, I will go for it. I will go for and, it. And that's what it is. Yeah, and and you know what? I used to uh, always be very defensive and and speak up for my friends, right. but I never would do it for myself. Right. So I and and you know I think awareness is really key when it comes to that because you have to know that sometimes people are just projecting, you know, like the things that they are going through, maybe they're having a bad day or, you know, maybe he already screwed, he already told them a hundred times what, you know, like, so, so it is good to, to be aware and, and also to be aware of your own, because of your own feelings, because sometimes you become the toxic person and you just like, let it out on other people. So, you know, having that awareness, I think is, is key when, when speaking up, because there could be either way. (laughs) Sometimes it's like, yes, when we're yeah. angry, maybe we need to keep quiet. But when we see, we need to reach out for help. And jokes apart, I have been very proud of a lot of time when I stepped in because I have saved some people from suicide. I've saved some kids from like depression. Uh, I have figured out stories. I have stepped up and said, I'm there uh, at a very young age as well. Uh, so uh, many, many things I'm very proud of. And when they call me back today from, from somebody who's like 15 years younger than me, who were almost like, you know, about to commit suicide and have called me many times that I'm committing suicide. I'm like, yeah, go ahead, commit suicide. I think it's a great thing to do. So, you know, so try to purposely do the, like the breakaway from that thing. I've done things like that. And I yes. feel that in spite of the fact that I was scared, but I did not stop myself from, and that was my learning. But you're right. Yeah. I've never done it for myself. But I've never done it for right. myself because I've always felt that I can figure it out. And that's what I was telling yeah. you. About. The receiving bit. The receiving. Still, that exactly. Like, yes, I need help. 
um yes it's okay it's all right yes. i don't have to take the charge to always say that i need to fix it even if i'm not yes so yes so beautiful i can talk to you as you said like so many mothers but as i said <laughs> talking to you what is rosa's dream because then i am also making a lot of dreams come true in the workshop just in 3 4 minutes from now um what's yes. your dream Oh, I, you know, to help as many women as I can to to realize their dreams. So, you know, the things that I've done and the things that I've learned, I think over the past few years online and 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 with my with my business, I want to be able to make that a reality also for others and, you know, to be able to hold their hand and support them. And you, you know, like you said, the receiver in me. I just love giving, and I love being able to to help women go, you know, like realize their own dreams. So that is very fulfilling to me, whether or not you know, like I get paid for it. It's just like a a thing that I would do for free for the rest of my life. <laughs> it it is just change. Like we need to be okay with trying to even charge for helping, right? That's yeah, another, exactly. That's exactly. another struggle that's... that I do with, and I'm like, fine, no, 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 it's, okay, it's fine. So then it comes, and you know, I'm the first one to go and pay when somebody says, "I'm going to do it for me." I'm like, no, no, yeah, no. yeah, you're the one. <laughs> you, 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 should, same. you should be paid for this. You're so amazing, same. you know. And, yes, and same, I'm, same for me. Uh, I'm like, what? charge me more. Yeah, yeah, charge, <laughs> oh my god, charge me more. Yeah, I'm just like you. So what 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 <laughs> month are you born in, Rosa? Let me. Ask. I'm August, August twenty third. I'm a Virgo. I'm <laughs> so. Aquarius. Well, um, yes. I'm inviting you in the workshop because you're already a mom, a seventy third mom. You're like, yes. but it's going to be. Are you expecting as well? You have kids to take care of. It's going to be recorded, so you can uh, yes. see later. But must see that because I'm taking charge again. and making sure today some stories come out some ideas come out some pictures get done uh, in the workshop so i'm prepared excited about it i shall go on yes. my mums who are going to join me in the workshop but i totally totally love this and i'm telling you i came from a mall all tired like being pulled don't take me i want to be playing here and i'm like no i need to go back home there is rosa there is mums coming <laughs> <laughs> there's all of these things yeah yes no but i really appreciate appreciate you you know having the energy and and you know for no, same here from, right now i got <laughs> this right we right. connect we connected yes. and i just confess i'm reaching 75 and it's scaring me and i keep telling myself no the 76th no. mom will come you, there will be the 100th yes. be the 99th the book will be out don't turn back so lots of things yes. happening um lots of good luck and i'm waiting for your picture uh, we definitely want your baby um who's like all ready to come um uh, yes uh, and <laughs> lots of love to you and we will celebrate whenever you have because i'm sure you are a person who builds the community you will get to yes. with mums as well uh and yes. i think you will bring i i can see it that you will pull a lot of love as well so good luck yes Oscar. i love that luck and, thank you so much yeah, i appreciate so you this book never shortage yes 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 i know yes there is another <laughs> one who has no shortage of love and she speaks up also very carefully so debbie is there as well for all her love thank you france yes thank you, all right Mary. thank you debbie and let's go to the workshop you're most welcome i'm All right. telling you the zoom link if you want to put your camera off and listen it's okay otherwise there will be a replay yes all right thank you shiga yeah. i really appreciate it bye 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 have a good day bye